everyone, and welcome back to yet another episode of the One Eye, One Life podcast with your host, Ebony Devlin. Before I start this episode, I just want to wish everyone a very healthy and happy new year, and I hope everyone had a very, very safe and lovely Christmas. For this episode, I'm going to be sharing with you that this Christmas I actually became a mother to a reborn baby and it's my first reborn baby and I am also going to be sharing a little bit of the journey with you of how I actually became comfortable with the idea of having children. First off, what are reborn babies? Well, I'll answer that for you because reborn babies give the real feel of having a baby. Now, when you think of a doll that gives you the real feel of having a baby, you think of screaming, you think of pooping, you think of, you know, peeing everywhere. It doesn't do that, but it just gives the the real feel off a baby like the the weight of a baby the skin even feels real and actually reborn babies are made for women that actually can't seem to have a child now i am not saying by any means that i will not be able to have a child but for right now i can't because as you guys know uh, if you've been following my channel for quite some time, you will know that I am suffering from stage 5 chronic kidney disease. And right now, I can't have children. So, I wanted to get a reborn baby. So, for the avoidance of any doubt, I will not be addressing the baby's name right here on this show. However, if you would like to know the baby's name check out my Instagram, which I will be linking down below. Now, I'm going to get into the journey of how I became comfortable with having children. Um, And it all started back in 2018 when I actually got kidney disease. I actually ended up in hospital all that year. Not all of it, not constantly all of that year but in and out of hospital and my life just sort of as I seen it just seemed to in my mind fizzle out of control and all of my life not even in 2018 but all of my life just seemed to be this just never-ending story of me feeling like I was going nowhere On my birthday, I would obviously become a different age. So 15, 16, 17, 18, you know, I would grow up, but yet I felt stuck in the one place. And, you know, I would see other people my age and it would be like, oh, I have a boyfriend at 17 or 18. And it's like, well, I'm your age. Why aren't I living up? Like, why aren't I living my life like you are, you know? And it was like, I was basically stuck. And it was so frustrating. And to top it all off, now when I was 18, at the sort of prime of your life, the 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 moment in which I was praying for, the moment in which I was living for, like, I lived my whole life to be 18. And now it just... And to put it plainly... All of it just backfired and I ended up getting really, really, really depressed and I just felt that, you know, I've been suffering with depression since the age of 12 but now this, at that stage, it it had gotten really, really bad and, um, yeah, it's just gotten really, really bad and I couldn't handle it. And I just started to feel like no one would ever want me. I started to feel like I was hopeless. Like I started to feel like, oh, maybe I wasn't meant to have children or maybe I wasn't meant to have a boyfriend or maybe I wasn't meant to have my first kiss or maybe I wasn't even meant to be in the world at all. And, you know, it started to really backfire and I really started to get quite suicidal over the whole thing. And... Because of this, I started to develop sort of negative associations with things. So basically, if I saw 
someone that had a child, I would say, oh, you know, but that would never happen to me. Or then if I saw someone got engaged or if I saw a wedding, you know, I would get really upset and just think, oh, that will never happen to me. You know, or I could never be happy for anyone because I always felt like, oh, when will my time come? Because I felt like time for me was running out. I was at that stage of my life where if I didn't do it now, I would never, ever marry or... I would never have a boyfriend, you know, I I would never do anything with my life if I didn't do it now at the age of 18 or in my teenage years, you know, I was under that illusion. And just when I thought I got out of my two week depression, I got dragged down again by the news that some celebrity had just gotten engaged. Three years ago, in 2018, I would have never even dreamt of holding a reborn baby. You know, because it just, the thought of it just really hurt me. I would have not even been able to watch any of the pregnancy programs or just any program in general that involved giving birth or, you know... If I was watching, you know, any soaps and they were giving birth, I couldn't do it. And it was, it just really, really, really broke my heart to do that because I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to have to do that. And no one was telling me that I had to do that, but I felt like I had to do it. I remember going to therapy a lot during 2018. And I just remember telling the therapist, that I just didn't want to hide anymore. And I felt like during 2018, I was hiding quite a bit. I felt like I was hiding from life and I felt like I wasn't embracing it like one should. I originally wanted a reborn baby in 2019. Actually, I was saying to my mom, actually, yeah, in 2019, I was saying, well, next Christmas, You know, for Christmas in 2019, can I get a reborn baby? But you see, they're they're so expensive. And you can't just say, you know, in April or May or even November, you can't just say, oh, I'd love a reborn baby. You know, it has to be ages in the making. And mum said, "Um, yes, uh, that I could get one. And she looked on the website, but she couldn't get one. So then we were saying, oh, well, maybe next year uh, I can get one. So, you know, we waited until 2020 and um, I asked for a reborn really early that year. Really early. I was in January last year. I remember asking for it, I think, or something like that. And we looked on the website and, you know, still they were really, really difficult to get. But we ended up getting one. So I feel like if you really want one, you should get one really, really early. And for the reasons mentioned earlier in the show, I felt like getting a reborn was a really, really, really big deal for me. And it felt like it marked a new beginning for me. You know, it marked a new beginning of self-belief, self-worth. You know, it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to get a doll. You know, it wasn't like that at all. Um, But it felt like it was... It just felt like it was a new beginning after all of the hurt that I had felt over the years. So, for Reborns, you can actually buy them clothes and accessories. So, the accessories can stem from prams, um, carts, bouncers, anything that you can get a baby. Anything that you can get a baby, you can get a reborn. And even the clothes, you can actually buy them in a store or you can actually buy them 
on a website, a reborn website, especially for reborn baby dolls. Now that I actually have my reborn, I couldn't see my life without one. It's just given me everything I've been wanting my whole life. It's just incredible. I can't put it into words. But we've run out of time for this episode of the One Eye One Life podcast with your host, Ebony Devlin. If you liked it, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.